To glue my fretboard to the neck, uh, I use uh, tight bond, uh, regular wood glue. Uh, I'm going to spread this out, and the tape is on there um, just so that I don't load up the uh, truss rod channel with a bunch of glue. Um, once I smooth everything out, pull the tape off, then I'll put the fretboard on. I'll align it um, towards the headstock first. Um, you can't really see it on the fretboard, but uh, there are two center lines. And so what I'll do is use the center line that I drew on the neck to align that, align the nut position, clamp it down uh, lightly, go to the other side, align it uh, at the heel, and then I'll put a bunch of other clamps on. Uh, I have six clamps that I'm going to use right now. Uh, I think I could probably use eight if I need to. Um, so it should be good and glued. Um, essentially, I just want to put enough glue here so that it squeezes out the sides. Uh, I'm not really worried about the squeeze out going all over the place. Uh, I'll be able to clean that up um, a little bit later. So I'm going to glue this up here, and then it's going to sit all night. And I'll come back in the morning and uh, trim the fretboard to be flush with the neck. So the neck dried really nicely overnight. Um, when I flip it over here, you can see um, there isn't a ton of material um, where the fretboard overhangs the neck. Originally, I thought I was going to use my router to actually trim this off, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this to the bandsaw, I'm going to clean up the edge a little bit, and then I'm going to use my belt sander to um, finalize the, uh, to make them both flush, um, the neck uh, and the fretboard. Um, something about the router just strikes me wrong. I'm, I'm using Zeracote for the fretboard. Um, and I'm not sure I have the right bit to do that perfectly cleanly. Um, whereas with the belt sander, um, you know, I'll be able to sneak up on the edge. And then, of course, I'll be sanding so uh, it will get nice and smooth. So I'm going to go over to the bandsaw and then uh, we'll see how this turns out. I'm definitely happy that I used the bandsaw here. Um, I was surprised. Uh, that's a new blade uh, and, and a really high quality blade and itself seemed to be having some issues uh, cutting through this smoothly. Um, you know, it's nothing that's going to be, uh, that can't be fixed using the band, uh, uh, excuse me, the belt sander. Um, but the router, I'm not sure would have done a good job. And so uh, luckily I've avoided tear out by doing this. Um, you can see I'm much closer now um, to the neck blank. Um, you can see it this way, I guess. Okay, and so now I'll go to the belt sander, um, actually smooth this up, um, and then see what other work remains um, for finishing the neck blank. I used a 240 grit belt, um, and this was absolutely the right way to do it. So I'm not sure it's going to really show up on the camera here, but uh, I've got a nice true edge, uh, nice and smooth. The 240 grit belt um, gives you a little bit of time um, to make sure you're not going too far. Um, it leaves a really smooth edge. Um, during the time lapse, you might have seen that I was 
um, kind of hovering over this or squatting over it. Um, it's hard to, to explain, but you can actually use the belt sander um, as its own straight edge. And so what I was doing was looking over here, trying to line this up so that I maintained a, a consistent gap. Um, and so now I have uh, a fairly flat uh, neck along uh, the side dimensions and then you know the fretboard is is perfectly smooth and flush um, to the neck blank and so with that uh, I'm pretty much done with my neck blank fabrication uh, the only thing left is actually to cut the uh, headstock here um, which I'll do on a bandsaw so if it hasn't been clear before uh, I just talk while I'm working I don't um, write down a script or anything and so uh, I was not correct. Uh, the bandsaw is not the next step. The next step is actually to put um, the, the little bit of a, a radius uh, here to make the transition from the nuts to uh, the headstock. And I've gone ahead and I've drawn a line here, um, uh, fender or at least strat style uh, headstocks are about 15 millimeters thick. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my spindle sander here with a two inch diameter uh, sanding um, spool. And I'm just gonna hold it in and, and actually carve this radius in. And so what this will end up doing is cleaning up this hard edge here, start to put a little bit of a, a, a smooth transition in. And then after that, I'll come back and use the bandsaw to trim this line. Uh, and then of course, clean it up with, you know, either the spindle sander or the belt sander. You can see the spindle sander does an awesome job here. And so um, basically what I was doing was just looking um, to make sure that this line um, was approximately parallel to the nut. Um, that's really just for aesthetic purposes. Uh, you can see on the other side here, I've more or less gone to my line. Um, it doesn't have to be 15 millimeters exactly. It really just needs to be thick enough uh, for the tuning pegs not to be uh, sticking out too far. Uh, but at the same time, it has to be uh, enough of a scoop um, so that there's uh, a downward angle for the strings to keep the um, string pressure at the nut correct. And so now I can go to the bandsaw, and then after this, uh, my neck blank will be finished. So there you go. Uh, cut it uh, fairly close to the line here. Um, you can see there's a little bit of a ridge here. I'll just take care of this during sanding. Um, and that's it. I've got a neck blank. Um, in another video, I'll show how to do the inlays, uh, show how to do the fretting, um, possibly drilling out the holes here. Um, but that's about it. Um, that's how you build a neck blank.